Let's talk about the New York Jets and Aaron Rodgers because this team went out over this course this offseason so far. They've made some major moves, but they're major boom or bust signings with this team. If these moves do not make out, the New York Jets may be going out there and trying to find a new head coach and a general manager long term. And I'm not trying to come on here and say that Robert Sala has been a terrible head coach with this team and that Joe Douglas is a horrible general manager, but they're putting a lot of their stock into Aaron Rodgers and into some injury prone pieces as well. I want to start with the offensive line now last season his offensive line was abysmal it was part of the reason why Aaron Rodgers tore his Achilles some people believe that Aaron Rodgers held on to the football for too long he should have threw the football away but regardless he tore that Achilles and that offensive line was going to be horrible regardless we saw how it looked with Zach Wilson and we saw how it looked with Trevor Simeon and other quarterbacks as well and you have to start with Makai Becton Makai Becton had 985 snaps played 18 penalties, the second most in the NFL, and 12 sacks allowed. That was first with being tied in the NFL for most sacks on a tackle. Then you look at who they bring in. Tyron Smith, a phenomenal tackle from the Dallas Cowboys, a great veteran to have around. The problem is he hasn't played a full season since 2015. 847 snaps played this season, but only one sack allowed. If he can give you 12 to 13 games, that's going to be a major plus. But this is a guy in the past that's dealt with ankle injuries, knee injuries, injuries and back injuries as well and you look at that back injury he hasn't been the same since then like I mentioned a couple of seconds ago you haven't played a full season since 2015 and you do worry about that because this is a, it's an offensive line they need more depth pieces and they need better players I like what they're doing up front by bringing in these veteran guys but in the first round you should still have to go out there and draft an offensive tackle or an offensive guard that can be flexible with this team. The defense is going to be great regardless because of the play calling by Kosala and the players that you have and that foundation that he's built up over the last couple of years. But you have to go out there and figure out this offensive line. So getting Tyron Smith, I love that move, but he has to stay healthy. The same with a guy like Mike Williams coming over from Los Angeles Chargers. He'll be 30 years old for this upcoming season. When this new season starts, he'll be 30 years old. And this is a man that hasn't been able to stay healthy on the field. Now, he has been able to go out there and show you flashes of being a top wide receiver. That's great and all. But part of the reason why the Chargers cut him, he was making too much and because of the injuries. His season was just cut short in a few games this season because of a torn ACL. We go back a couple of years ago, suffered a back injury. When the last time he played a full season, he looked like a true number one wide receiver. But the problem is, is with the injuries that he's been dealing with, a back injury and an ACL injury, that's a death sentence for for most NFL wide receivers long term. It is only a one year deal, but hopefully he can go back to being a healthy wide receiver. The last time he played a full season was in 2021. He played in 16 games. He has 76 receptions for 1,146 receiving yards and nine receiving touchdowns. That's going to be a great number two wide receiver opposite side, Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson has been a true number one wide receiver with this team, has been the best offensive player with this team for the last couple of years. And he's been going out there putting up amazing numbers with guys like Zach Wilson and Trevor Simeon as his quarterbacks. And also Chris Schreveler as well when he came in in the second half against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And this man still came out there and he was still balling and putting up good numbers. You look at him this season, he had over a thousand yards receiving. And that is crazy because this is an offense since Coach Sala has gotten here that's been one of the worst rated offenses in the NFL coach LaFleur was a horrible offensive coordinator and coach Nathaniel Hackett is horrible as well you can give him more time but the thing is with coach Hackett you look at it, this situation he didn't have a starting quarterback and his offensive line was abysmal we'll see how good of a play caller he is long term with this team because he'll get another shot with the team hopefully Aaron Rodgers can stay healthy you have two very good foundational pieces well three you have Brees Hall at the running back spot towards ACL his rookie season but we saw those flashes we saw those flashes this season they brought in a guy like Dalvin Cook Brees Hall was so good, they didn't need Davin Cook, essentially. They let Davin Cook go. He's no longer with this team. Brees Hall in the season had 994 rushing yards. That is basically over 1,000 yards rushing for most running backs in the NFL. This is a guy that had to fight through contact 21% of the time before he crossed the line of scrimmage, which is crazy for most NFL running backs. He had to go out there and beat two to three defenders just to get past the line of scrimmage. Has great speed, has very good soft hands as well, and can catch the football at the backfield. He's going to be one of the best running backs in the NFL if this 
this whole thing can work out moving forward. You also have another guy with this team. You have Garrett Wilson, who is the number one foundational piece. Number two is Brees Hall. Number three, Elijah Vera Tucker. If he can stay healthy, that's a very good offensive lineman. He's been the best offensive lineman with this team the last two seasons. The problem is with him, he hasn't been able to stay healthy. If he can stay fully healthy, that's a great guard to have around. They also brought in Morgan Moses as well. Morgan Moses is a very interesting player to look at because his numbers aren't the best, but for the New York Jets, they're very good numbers. On this season, he allowed five sacks with 778 snaps played. Five sacks allowed is a bit concerning, but at the same time, it's better than Mekhi Becton, and it's better than the tackle that you just had on the field last season. So you're upgrading there. You still have your first round pick, like I mentioned before, because Aaron Rodgers did not play over 75% of the snaps. He only play basically two percent if you want to be technical because he got hurt on the first drive against the buffalo bills so you lose your second round pick to the green bay packers but it doesn't really matter you have aaron Rodgers, you keep that man upright and you hope that he can get the best out of these players at the end of the day going out there and trading for aaron Rodgers with a desperation move coming from the new york jets because zach wilson was a bust and speaking of zach wilson he would no longer be with this team they're trying to trade him we heard the chatter at the combine of what they wanted to do. Basically, they're saying, hey, he can go out there. He can request a trade. He can find his own trade. No one is going to trade for a quarterback that had his best season with nine passing touchdowns to 11 interceptions. And that was in his rookie season. I look at a guy like Zach Wilson that was overdrafted and went to the wrong franchise. Zach Wilson shouldn't have been a first round pick. And I said that a couple years ago in that draft class. I may have been wrong about guys like Mac Jones, but I was 100% right about Zach Wilson. The Chicago Bears just traded Justin Fields for a for a conditional six round pick. You're not going to be able to go out there and get a fifth, sixth, or a seven round pick for Zach Wilson. So you're possibly going to have to go out there and just cut him. You have Tyrod Taylor now as a backup with this team. I love that move because you look at what happened last season. Aaron Rodgers goes down. Zach Wilson is your backup. He's not even good enough to be a backup. I think that Zach Wilson be very good in the USFL. He's just not going to be a good quarterback in the NFL. And there's no reason for another team to go out there and possibly trade for him and try to fix him either because they did not go out there and they did not draft him. Instead, you have other situations to where you could draft your own quarterback in the fourth, fifth round and try to build them up instead of going out there with a guy like Zach Wilson whose confidence is shot and just to be honest with you guys he's not an NFL quarterback the Steelers for somewhat reason they traded Kenny Pickett for a third round pick you're not going to be able to go out there and get that for Zach Wilson this kid is a wash he's a bust and just completely start over it's a reason why they had to go out there and get Aaron Rodgers to begin with so this offense they're bringing in the right pieces you're bringing in the right veterans you're bringing in another wide receiver to help out Garrett Wilson if Mike Williams can stay healthy you still have Alan Lazard with this team was a very good wide receiver with Aaron Rodgers when he was with the Green Bay Packers the problem is this season he was terrible and minus Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson a a lot of the wide receivers with a lot of wide receivers and running backs for this team did not work out because the offensive foundation. And that's what I'm looking at Coach Hackett right there and also Coach Sala as well. Coach Sala's done a great job on the defensive side of things. When the offensive side of things, bringing in a guy like Coach LaFleur was a bust. He did not know how to work in red zone situation. And the same with Coach Hackett as well. It seems like this organization was trying to go out there and help out Aaron Rodgers more than just trying to go out there and help themselves out for the next four to five years. Because I don't see Aaron Rodgers playing for the next four to five Five years and you still need to go out there and find that true franchise quarterback with this team when Aaron Rodgers is done but right now they're all in on a lot of pieces that are pretty much injury prone like I mentioned Tyron Smith hasn't played a full season since 2015 you look at a guy like Mike Williams it's a great wide receiver to have around if he can stay healthy he has been able to stay fully healthy over the last couple of years and Aaron Rodgers coming off Achilles injury so this is a major boom or bust team and I mentioned this before Kosala great defensive mind I'm starting to question him as a head coach I wanted to see him work out as a head coach I don't think that's going to truly fully happen just yet because you look at what he's able to do with the defensive side of things he's a great defensive minded guy the same with Dennis Allen Dennis Allen is the head coach with the New Orleans Saints their offense has been abysmal but their defense has been rock solid usually with those type of coaches they don't stick around as head coaches they go back to being defensive coordinators if this thing does not work out with the New York Jets they may move off of Robert Sala after this season and he will be getting a raw deal in my opinion because he has Zach Wilson as his quarterback for the first couple of years with the New York Jets hopefully if Aaron Rodgers can stay healthy the Jets can be in that pattern because this man is a very good coach and the players love him and they play hard for him I look at this defense though they have a lot of good players now they did 
lose out on Bryce Huff. He went to the Philadelphia Eagles. He had 10 and a half sacks on the season. Phenomenal pass rusher. But you also have Jermaine Johnson, who was phenomenal this season. Seven and a half sacks, one forced fumble, one interception. And one thing you have to take in note with the New York Jets and the way that they run their defense. It's a committee of pass rushers. They rotate guys in and out. Similar to what the Philadelphia Eagles do and what they did a couple years ago when they beat the New England Patriots in that Super Bowl. They rotate their defense alignment. So just because a guy doesn't have double digit sacks on the season does not mean that, that they were not going out there and they were not making a huge impact. You have certain defense alignment that would go go out there in certain coverages and certain defense alignment only play on certain downs. You may see a guy like Jermaine Johnson. He only plays on second and third down in certain games. And some games on the back half of the season, he played first, second, third, and fourth down when needed. You bring in a guy like Javon Kenlaw, phenomenal defensive tackle, three and a half sacks on the season. The reason why I say he's a def- he's a phenomenal defensive tackle is because the way that Kosalo will use him. He's a guy that's coming over from the San Francisco 49ers, and he's a guy that Coach Sala helped draft and develop as well. And I trust him to get the best out of him in this defense. You have John Franklin Myers, three and a half sacks on the season, and you still have Quentin Williams, who was phenomenal. Five and a half sacks on the season, one forced fumble, one interception. Did not have the double-digit sacks this season, but was still going out there stopping the run and was taking triple to double teams and was freeing up guys like Bryce Huff, and he was freeing up Jermaine Johnson as well. And you still have a first round pick from last season in Will McDonald the fourth who could be a very good rotational defensive lineman long term with this team and limited snaps he gave you good production so I'd like to pass rush with this team as a whole the linebackers are very good as well CJ Mosley is one of the best linebackers in the game in terms of being a veteran and how old he is in this stage of his career and what he's asked to do he's not going to go out there he's not going to be a Fred Warner type and he's not the same CJ Mosley that he was with the Baltimore Ravens but he's still a very good veteran in the game and he gets these guys into the, the right situation he could stop the run he could cause some fumbles and I look at Quincy Williams as well he's the brother of Quentin Williams this is not one of those situations you just sign on a star brother and just let him get reps with the team no Quincy Williams is a very good linebacker 95 solo tackles in the season that was fifth most in the NFL two sacks two forced fumbles and an interception as well he's a very good playmaking linebacker with this team and the secondary is phenomenal you have DJ Reed who is a very good cornerback and we all know about Sauce Garner Basically, quarterbacks are afraid to throw this guy's way because of how great he is at intercepting the football and just tipping the ball up for other guys to get those interceptions. You do miss out on Jordan Whitehead. He returns to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But at the same time, the way that this defense is made and the way that they play around, I trust those guys to go out there and do what they have to do to get things done. I love the defense of the New York Jets. It's just the offense that I'm worried about. And this has been a common theme over the last couple of years. If Aaron Rodgers can just stay healthy and they can just go out there and just score 14 to 20 one points consistently on the season they're going to be in a great situation and you may say only 14 points in a game can win them football games it actually can they went out there they dominated against the Philadelphia Eagles they were the first team this season to give the, to give out the blueprint on how to defeat the Philadelphia Eagles this team went out there they dominated the Kansas City Chiefs as well if Zach Wilson didn't have that fumble and it was the best game that he's played in his entire career even dating back to BYU they possibly beat the Kansas City Chiefs they dominated the Denver Broncos with their defense alone majority of of their wins this season came from how great their defense was so if this defense can go out there and they can still perform to that level and things do change from year to year they're going to be in the thick of things in this division you look at the Miami Dolphins Tua doesn't do well with pressure guess what the New York Jets bring a lot of pressure Josh Allen he lost his team in week one with a backup in Zach Wilson yes Xavier Gibson came away with that crazy punt return but at the same time the defense went out there and they forced him to throw three interceptions and the New England Patriots for the first time in a very long time they may be the worst team in this division but let me know in the comment section below how do you guys feel about the New York Jets and can they be a realistic Super Bowl Contending team. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, when each and every last Wayne guys stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching the video, guys. God bless. Peace.